There we go. <laughs> Apparently it's just flipped around for some reason. How the shit do I flip this? Ah! <laughs> Fuck you, technology! Ah! How did... Why did you flip? There we go. <sighs> but yes. Also, uh, where that? And this is why I fucking hate this thing. I really, really fucking hate this. This is going to be shit. Fucking technology can suck my dick. Well. <laughs> eventually, after, you know, some random crap that the broadcaster did, actually started on its own without me doing anything, we bring you Battletech! on the day of the making of the things and the release and all that stuff haha uh -huh. right now I'm a bit of a derp and I'm not gonna go skirmish so you're gonna join me on a mystical magical campaign through the inner sphere and the periphery welcome to my mercenary company well when we eventually get round to it see I've seen I've been I kickstarted this thing right I've been but I didn't kickstart enough to get all the wonderful beta pieces or any of the extra shiny things which come with it, right? I got it just so I got the game on the day. Because I was unemployed and I was cheap. But I've been watching all the videos of all the other back like the bigger backers and the bigger streamers play in this thing. And it's just made me want it. Foaming at the mouth want it. Good day, good sir! You join me upon my glorious quest across the inner sphere. Well, I say across the inner sphere, but I was I was saying I've seen a few a lot of videos from this and the map is huge, but it's not the whole inner sphere. It's sort of somewhere on the edge. It's taken a bit of time to load, but that's okay. Because it's an entirely kind of procedurally generated war zone. Forever in a day. And then Every mission is, well, you get like your set of missions, you get your assaults, you get your base attacks, you get your escorts, you get your, you know, guard duty. And they don't, they don't look terrible. But, we're here for story. I am Kamea of House Arana. High Lady of the Oregon Reach. Protector of Coromadir. And the Sword of Restoration. I am not a hero, no matter what the story said. A hero would have sacrificed more than compromised less. A hero would have done better. You know this, of course. You were there. My father used to tell me stories about the ancient times. About the stars, a golden age of prosperity, upheld by the great mech warriors of old, guardians of the innocent, protectors of the peace. I always dreamed of following in their footsteps. I was too young to see the truth of things. After all, it wasn't heroism or a noble cause that won me the throne. Hiring a mercenary, 
skilled enough, perhaps ruthless enough, to carry the day. Kyle, you. I still don't know if you fought for honor or for the thrill of it, for belief in my cause, just to make money. But whether it was your noble heart or mercenary mind, your actions gave us hope. That makes you a hero in the eyes of history. Whether you believe it, that's up to you. Oh, I'll believe it. I'll, I'll be a motherfucking hero. That's what I'll be. Let's do this. Right. Now, get to make the person, and the person is not going to be a representation of me. Okay, it's not going to be a furry badger face, right? Purely because, right, I have, I'm, like, kind of lazy. And... Ah... Certain people wouldn't s keep calling me, or buzzing me, then that might not be going off, right? But first of all, here we are. You can reach a small kingdom in the Rimwood periphery, a region of space that lies at the outskirts of the more densely colonized inner sphere. It's home to the Oregon Coalition, a federation organized around a parliamentary monarchy and ruled by the Arano family. For three generations under the rule of House Arano, the Oregon Coalition has remained a relatively peaceful corner of the periphery. It is here your story begins. Okay, excellent. Right, let's have a look. Hmm, I wouldn't really want to be from the Draconis Combine, but I would. Eh. What do I... Right. Descendants of the Conquered Principality of Razzlehag. Blah, blah, blah. See, I'm tempted to be part of the, um... Well, not any of the, like, the major factions, like Karita, Marek, Davian, Steiner, Liao. But more one of these little periphery factions. Because right, you basically got pirates. Arr. Uh the Rimwood periphery, which is kinda just like a, a random sort of Star League without it being the Star League. So they like they they carry on even though the Star League is kinda smited. And then you got a bunch of boss ass hardheads. Uh, technically, uh, there's a lot of stuff here. I mean, I, I use... I, I mean, I play MacRory Online a lot, right? And I use a lot of what would be classed as Karita Max. The only problem is, part of the law behind Karita is that they really, really hate mercenaries. Because they think they're dishonourable scumfucks, basically. Uh, so, rather not be one of those. Merrick, uh, they are space Americans. Hoorah. All that freedom for freedom's sake. Also, Purple Pigeon. Uh, Davian are basically Space Brits, but the, the knightly kind of Space Brits, which means they're all honor and nobility and, you know, family and kings and things like that, but they're also assholes. Then you have the Space Germans, which is High Steiner, who are strength for strength. You know, we will rule by, you know, glorious power for the good of mankind and all that kind of stuff. And then there's La Liao, or Lao, or Li, or whatever it wants to be called, which is pretty much Space Asia. It it kind of encompasses everything from like India, China, you know, Japan. That well, Korea is basically Space Japan, but Liao is sort of like the other sort of big Asian, Middle Asian kind of feel about it, like. Culture, that's what I should say. But for good things sake, I'm just going to pick the Magistracy of Canopus. Because I'm going to make my character a lady face. Right. Through Im immigrants to the Oregon Reach, your family soon established a comfortable presence in a small backwater system on the edge of the Oregon space. By the time you were born, your family had become the de facto ruling nobility of the system's only inhabited planet. You were the oldest child, heir to the family titles and the ancestral battle mech, an old blackjack BJ1. <laughs> BJ. But enough of that. 
This is where you meet Raju Mastiff Montgomery, a veteran of the Succession Wars, whom your parents hired on for a season to train you as a mech warrior. Raju was a strict but capable teacher, and you quickly became a skilled pilot under his tutelage. And it was an uneventful life. Mm. You were exiled. Promising young sign of your family until you committed unforgivable transgressions. So at which point you ran away with your shiny shiny mech and gave them the middle finger. <laughs> Struck out on your own. And I see I'm looking at these sorry, the gunnery and tactics. You've got pilot and tactics. Which you struck out on your own. Heir to the noble family grew up wanting more. Couldn't stand a life of pampered nobility, and you legged it with your blackjack. Family went bankrupt. Grew older, you watched your family's fortunes slowly dwindle away. Nothing left, and you left with your blackjack to find your fortune. Everything blew up, and you died in the accident. And they died in an accident, but you were hard as hard as nuts. And carried on. And your family was betrayed. See, <sighs> see, family was betrayed gives you the the gunnery and the guts, which is what I'm after. All of these do different things. The guts make you sort of like tougher, harder. It gives you abilities to resist a lot of things. It gives you abilities to just you know weather the storm. Gunnery is obviously your ability to hit things. You, you know, you become more precise. You ignore people's defenses, and you get things through. Piloting means that you can actually control your mech better, which means you run faster. You can evade more. You, you've got, you know, running, jumping, climbing trees, kind of thing. Tactics is your control of the battlefield. It's more of a commander's role. It sort of allows you to pinpoint things, and you know, gain the best advantages of your situation. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for gunnery and guts because my playstyle revolves around me standing by being mensch and hitting things in the face. Okay, right. Now, I can be an Oregon soldier. So you have your prospects, you travel to the Cor Coromandia, the capital of the Oregon Coalition, and enlisted in the military, which will gain you one gunnery. You'll be a pirate. Arr! Out in the Rimwood periphery. Kicking ass and stealing shit. I'll get you some guts. You could be a Solaris Gladiator. Basically take your take your ass into the arena and kick other mech warriors in the face for gold and glory. <laughs> that will gain you a gunnery skill. Which I might go. The Innersphere Mercenary will gain you the tactics by just basically dropping in and being a merc. Guns for hire. Frontier Freelancer, which will give you more tactics. But it means that instead of being a pirate, you'll be out, out and about adventuring and you know, keeping things safe. You're a merchant, which will be more merchant guard. Uh, I actually think I will go with. I think I'll go with the gladiator. Oh. Years later, you cross paths with Raju Mastiff Montgomery again. Low level champion, down to your luck, and one bad fight away from the gutter. Until Raju heard about you, he trekked all the way to Solaris to offer you passage back to the Oregon Reach. And a job in the House of Rano. So he learned of you through all your, your fights and your glory. And until you, like, got rocked. I brought you back to the Oregon Reach to serve as a boss-ass guard. Bring in your probably ruined and absolutely battered to crap um, thing, really. Uh, let's have a look. Let's go from face to face to face to face. Some uh, kind of hardcore manly faces here. There we go. Let's customize some of this. Uh, pick skull on your forehead. 
I'll leave it at that. Uh, hair style. Let's see if I can get a like a bigger. Uh, I actually think that's probably the best one for us. Ah, facial hair, <laughs> beard. Nope, not gonna have that. Let's work with that. Uh, let's let's go with that lighting because that looks cool. Bit of grey. Wait, blue hair. This shit. Mm, at least I've actually got quite a lot of customization in this. Uh, we'll stick with that. Uh, glow in the dark, really nice. Uh, let's go with a bit of purpley goodness. Can I get it? It's pretty pink. There we go. Let's do this. Right, customization. Ha ha! To, uh, whoops. There we go. Anastasia Rosenberg. There we go. Awesome stuff. Right, now if you're wondering, the actual name all comes from, uh, I am not going for the bearded lady, damn it. The name actually comes from an old roleplay character which I had, which was kind of sort of stern and DJ Necromancer, but still. Um, hmm. Rather stern commanding woman. And please stop sending me messages. Right, blah 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 blah. All of the glory. Okay, Fred, so this is my character. Spent in the magistracy of Canopus, which is a. Matriarchy? Yes, if I read that correctly, it is a matriarchy. I, my family was betrayed, so I've got extra gunnery and guts. Uh, out of my own, fell into the life of Solaris Gladiator, which gave me extra gunnery. So I'm here, boss at gunnery. Right, pew pew pew. More guts. Not so much on the pilots and tactics, but this is all good. Confirm. Let's do this. Get into some actual fighting, actual ac combat of justice, and this. I've been waiting for this game for so long! But story and things! Ha! <sighs> uh, don't he just look like a dodgy git? It's like. Mm, stern and overlooking. He's given some sass. That looks like he just had a hot pepper. Mm. Can't you just guess? Can't you just guess what's gonna happen here? He needs a twirly mustache. Kind of like my fine mustache. But yes, he needs one. It's gonna be glorious. Because he's gonna dodge and get, and I hope that we get the opportunity later on to actually like stamp on his face with an atlas. We're like, Arr, take that, Arr, you douchebag. But we're gonna have to work our way up, fighting, doing all the glorious things. <laughs> oh, one of the big draws of this entire game comes a bit later when I get to show you like the mech lab and all this stuff. And obviously I'll start off really, really slow because I don't have any gear or kit or mechs. I've kind of got scramptions, just a bit. But there's like a huge customization thing, not just of the mechs. Pardon me. 
but you get like you start off with like a little drop ship, but you get a a bigger ship. This is what I have already seen. Uh, though the way you get it might be a bit different, because um, they obviously had like everything sorted already. Training mode activate. Let's have a look. Ooh, it looks pretty. Oh, zoom right into that mech. Oh, look at how tasty that is. I can like, practically see myself in the cockpit. <laughs> okay, right. The Spinoza refit yards, rush the repair on your blackjack. Looks like it's all in one piece, but we should run some diagnostics on it to be sure. Standard field tests, you know the drill. Okay, right. I am this close in, and those bushes look fucking amazing! Right. More importantly, though, I want to tell you about the job brought you out here to do. Do me a favor and get that battle mech moving. Let's see if there are any kinks in the actuators. Right. Rotate this. And then go like this. So I select my mech. Move here. Ooh. Right. So you, you use the left click to actually select the location, though you right click to select the mech, which is a bit awkward. And once you've selected it, you get obviously your angle of where you're aiming and your firing arcs. So let's just get shifting to the point now. All good. Brought you here because there's something wrong with in the capital. It's been too quiet since High Lord Tam Tamati's funeral, and I'm worried about Lady Camille's safety during her coronation process. Anyway, looks like your actuator's checked out. Let's conduct the weapons test. Target one of those burnt out old urban mechs. Ah. Oh. Poor little urban mech. Damn right. Okay, right, so let's have a look. S select one of these. Oh, no, wait, that just selects all of my stuff. So right click brings up this test dummy, which allows you to see all the components on it, the back, the front. Uh, selecting on these ones actually tells you what they have in them, but at current, these ones are just empty little burnt out shells, so they don't have anything in them. Right, select all that stuff. Let's just alpha this thing into nothingness. <laughs> Oop, uh, what? Not much left of that. Mm, satisfying. But it will probably be way, way more satisfying in a bigger, heavier, meatier mech. Good shot. Your guns are in working order at least. Done. Okay, target dummy. Tiny lady around her since 14 and blah blah blah. Since 14 years old, she can be naive at times and proud. But I have no doubt that she'll be just an effective ruler. As honest to see her safely to Cordia City. I'll rest easier once she's in the capital with her cousin Victoria by her side. Lady Victoria, well, she's only been training under me for a single season, but she's already shaped herself into one of the strongest mech warriors I've ever seen. Reminds me a lot of you, truth be told. My rival, you say? Anyway, we should run check on your targeting computer. You see that drone over there? Put some hurt on it for me, and then when it turns, take it out with a re-angle shot. Oops. Right, so, select him. Hmm. Uh-oh. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Fire at the target. Whoops, wrong button. God damn it. Yes, that's what I'm after. Pew pew pew. Okay, so hit the front armor and the front armor is tough. Okay, now turn around. This shows you all the, the glorious things about positioning and actual armor quantities and that. Tactics. Tactics. It will be glorious. Because mechs generally have a much heavier armament on the front. 
and a much weaker armament on the back and you've got to balance all this. So you might see a lot of people just properly front tanking everything and then trying not to let anything get behind them. That's a good tactic in its own right, but I don't tend to like it is it is bloody impressive, it's got really, really nice things. I'm still gonna have to get used to the target them with like right and left mouse clicks, but time to test my jump jets. Let's have a look. Right, so Select. Haha. -ha. And then I can use jump jets. Jump jets are far more effective mobility wise. Because obviously they allow you up and over a lot of places. Ooh, overheated. Splish, splash. Heat is also a major factor in this game. Um, which is really, really good because you've got to work your weapons and make sure that you, uh, that you don't pretty much shut down in the middle of battle and get absolutely roped by all the uh, the enemies present because you, when you shut down it's like for, for a turn or two and that's a killer especially when you know as I was saying before with the armor placement if you get a big heavy mech that can get up behind you, you you've like lost components or you're caught out and that's just the end for for that mech right. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay. Click this. Let's melee this fool. Da -da. Yeah, with the original, it's it's a very different beast than Mech Warrior Online because obviously you know the, you can take your time. You can. I mean, in the skirmish, you've got, like, timed turns, obviously, so it keeps the game flowing. But in single-player, you can just think. You've got time to think. Unlike a real-time strategy where you've got to sort of work with it, uh, like, as it comes. And you've got to take the... You've got to take each event as it's appearing and, and deal with it this way. If you're sitting there... And chilling, you can look at the whole battlefield. You can see where whatever enemies you've located are, and you can plan. Now, this is another big thing which comes up to it: the evasion. Right? Your mechs, as your mechs move, the evasion pops up, and the evasion basically adds tons and tons of negatives onto the enemy's hit to hit you. So you can run around, and as long as you keep running around you can pretty much mitigate a big majority of any damage that comes towards you. However, there are abilities which shred off the evasion. Um, there's one called Sensor Lock. It knocks two of the chevrons off, which obviously makes it easier to hit. If you've got multiple Sensor Lock mechs against you, then it doesn't matter how far you move, they'll lock you down and you'll get shot. So you've got to You've got to potentially take out those mechs as well in order to make yourself more robust and, you know, long-lived. Let's try this. Congratulations, Rose. Your blackjack's as combat-ready as it can be. Given the circumstances for what it's worth, I hope that my suspicions turn out to be unfounded. Let's get on. Let's get on. Maybe a runner was waiting. Get a bit of a sprint going. Mm, tasty, tasty, tasty mechs. Now I'm going to instantly rip out all the... Com when I get this opportunity, I'm going to rip out all the components of this blackjack because, well, I just want it to be a bit more... Well, a bit less reliant on gun, like ammo, really. Right. Ba -ba -ba. Rose, allow me to introduce Camille Arano, the soon-to-be High Lady of the Oregon Coalition. Lady Victoria on this channel. For the time being, my father has summoned me to the Picton Docks. I have a fleet inspection and a tour of the family riff refit yards to reside over before the coronation. Behold the responsibilities of a noble daughter. A fount of tedium that never runs dry. Yes, I know the feeling, cousin. This time of 
Time tomorrow I'll be responsible for the entire reach. Give my best to your father and don't be late for the tourney. The gambling dens are already taking bets on how long it'll take me to cripple that customized monstrosity, you pilot. Ha ha ha! Bold words, cousin, but the only victory they'll be celebrating is mine! You may be ascending the throne today, but my cargo is more than a match for the family heirloom that you call a battle mech. And in the arena, I reign supreme. So she is also, you know, had part and parcel of uh, Solaris 7 games. She's probably the one who, like, rocked your socks off before you got put back into the into the guard. Chuckling. We'll see, cousin. We'll see. At any rate, I will see you at the tourney grounds. Sir Reju, I'm ready to go when you are. Overland along the Cormorant Road as the Urano tradition. Aye, come here. We'll get you there in one piece. Rose, fall in behind me. And remember what I told you. She go get wrecked. Boss. Okay. Training mission over. Glorious stuff. 